Hey everyone, welcome back to CodeFlow. In today's video, we're polishing our obstacle generator. We'll learn how to create multiple types of obstacles and destroy the ones that are no longer visible in the scene. Let's get started. In the last video, we made our infinite level by moving the ground forward. But as you play, you'll notice a problem. Obstacles keep generating and stay behind the player, even though they're no longer visible. As more obstacles pile up, it can start to affect performance. So, we need a way to destroy those obstacles that are out of sight, behind the ball. Let's fix that. Let's get started by creating a destroyer. This destroyer, when attached to a game object, will destroy that game object if it's behind the player. First, we need to access the player's position. So let's define player, and in the awake method, we'll find the player using its tag, which we set in the previous video. Next, in the update method, we'll check if the obstacle's position is behind the player. If the Z value of the obstacle is less than the player's Z value, offset by 30, it's safe to destroy it. The 30 unit offset ensures the obstacle is fully out of view before it's removed. To destroy it, we'll use Unity's destroy function and pass in the game object we want to remove. This simple method keeps your scene clean and improves performance by removing unnecessary game objects. Now attach this destroyer script to the obstacles and you're good to go. When you play the game, you'll see that the game objects behind the player are being destroyed. Next, let's address our obstacle variety. Right now, we only have one type of obstacle, a single cube. To make our game more challenging, let's add different shapes of obstacles. To do this, modify the obstacle by placing it on the ground and unpacking it completely so it's not linked to the original prefab. Temporarily hide other game objects in the scene to make designing easier. Reposition the parts and use the top view to align everything properly. Create a new empty game object, rename it based on the shape you're creating, and make the obstacle parts its children. Now you can duplicate the obstacle parts and rearrange them to create the desired shape. After completing the shape, drag the parent game object into the prefab folder to save it as a prefab. Once saved, you can delete the obstacle from the hierarchy. Repeat this process to create as many shapes as you want. For this tutorial, we'll create seven different obstacle shapes. Now that we have multiple shapes, let's modify the obstacle generator to randomly spawn these new obstacles. First, we'll change the obstacle prefab variable to an array called obstacle prefabs. This array will hold all the different obstacle prefabs. We'll also adjust the horizon distance and spacing between obstacles using the inspector later. In the update method, we'll keep the logic the same, but instead of spawning a single prefab, we'll use random.range method to pick one randomly from the array of obstacle prefabs. 
Now, we'll adjust some values to experiment and customize how we want the game to feel. Since we have seven different obstacles, we'll create a list of these obstacles and assign each prefab to it. When we play the game, you'll notice that the obstacles are now being generated randomly from the list, adding variety to the gameplay. We're also successfully destroying the obstacles as they go behind the player. However, there's a small problem. The destroyer is currently attached to the child object of each obstacle. As a result, only the child object gets destroyed, leaving the parent object intact in the hierarchy. To fix this, open each prefab and remove the destroyer script from the child object. Attach the destroyer script to the parent game object instead. To save time, you can multi-select the obstacles and remove the script from all of them at once. Apply the changes to all prefabs. Now when you play the game, you'll see that the parent game object is destroyed along with its children. This ensures that the hierarchy stays clean and all unused objects are properly removed from the scene. Great job! I hope this tutorial made managing game objects easier for you. Now you know how to manage game objects efficiently by instantiating and destroying them the right way. This method is super effective for improving game performance and keeping your scene well organized. If you have any questions or need help, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, share it with others, and subscribe for more Unity tips and tutorials. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.